Being on a historic recreation of a Great Lakes schooner is a pretty terrific way to connect educators to the lake. Sea Grant is awesome. I love the way that they are working with teachers to help support us in the classroom. Where we're at is amazing. The ship that we're on is unbelievable. We have science and we have sailing. Sea Grant's Shipboard Science Program is a place-based educational experience for teachers and scientists from across Great Lakes communities. There's been a lot of changes. I'm going to focus more on the, the, the past 20 years. As multiple threats to the Great Lakes continue to mount, the need for capable educators from all grade levels who can inspire students to become their future caretakers and stewards is becoming more imperative. And then finally, this is the Senator. This is in about 430 feet of water. Impassioned experts from the Great Lakes scientific community who are eager to pass on their professional knowledge orient the teachers in the history of the lakes as well as an overview of current and future threats to their ecology. The truck's pretty full of stuff, so it better be a big boat. <laughs> After a day of preparations and setting goals, an anxious group of teachers sets their sights on the week ahead. And not everyone is certain how things will unfold. I'm very excited and a little nervous too. <laughs> Still scared of getting sick on that thing. <laughs> Eric says, oh, beyond those rocks, there's lots of, lots and lots of waves. I've never been on a three-masted ship before, though, so this is a completely new experience for me. Before leaving port, they familiarize themselves with the scientific equipment they'll be using. We're doing a couple of different kinds of sampling while we're on the ship. We'll be doing some in the port, we'll be doing some out in the open water. So yeah, there's plenty of stuff yeah. in there. Oh. So right now, um, we are taking our first plankton sample, and so we have um, our teachers who have created some sampling equipment from yesterday, yeah, testing it in the water for the first time. Finally, the moment they've all been waiting for, boarding the Dennis Sullivan and setting sail. The crew familiarized participants in the design of the vessel, the functions of various crew positions, and put teachers to work on the rigging raising and lowering sails with their colleagues as they chart a path across the inland sea. That's the standing jib, all right? You're on the standing halyard, and when the time comes, when they say haul away, you're gonna, you're gonna haul away on that, and that standing jib is gonna go way up. Okay, we need to let the mate know that you're ready on the standing halyard by saying, ready standing halyard. By the time you get to halyard, you're gonna have forgotten how to say halyard, so yeah. keep that in your mind. <laughs> right. right? Ready standing halyard, now say it loud. Right now. Ready, standing, halyard. All the way out here. Keep you down, Halls. Head to sheet. Keep you down, Halls. Head to sheet. Stay the bus. Stay the bus, my lady. My lady. Standing to the pan. Between ports of call, teachers and scientists work in small teams. Together, they take samples of the lake measuring things like dissolved oxygen and water clarity, while keeping an eye out for invasive species. Ideally, we'll collect some data that we can use as we get towards the end of the week and the teachers can compare it with historic data. So this is a really pretty dense sampling. See that stuff floating in? Those are all, were all living organisms that we pulled out of Lake Michigan. All microscopic. Participants learn the ins and outs of sailing a tall ship, and some even climb the rigging and get a view unlike any other. Most importantly, teachers begin brainstorming and planning ways to integrate their experiences into lesson plans for their classrooms. You know, a lot of them are from outside the watershed and so they can kind of bring that knowledge back to their students and get lots of people interested in the Great Lakes. While scientists help them scale experiments for the classroom environment. We have a much smaller version of these, like smaller materials that you probably wouldn't use on a real ship that we use in the classroom or in streams. But to see what real scientists use and how similar they are to the tools that they get to interact with, I think will be kind of exciting. Alumni of the Shipboard Science Program often join the crew for a few days and offer examples of how they have integrated concepts into their classrooms. One great part of an experience like this is 
building relationships and rapport with other educators. I had met an educator on the Lake Guardian in 2011 and since then we've been collaborating and our students have been collaborating to share water quality data. It really is a highlight, the project that we work on, the collaboration, it really brings science to life. It's real data instead of just gathering numbers uh, in a workbook. They know it's meaningful so they're more passionate. That relationship um, between our two schools wouldn't exist if it, it hadn't been for the, the experience we had um, with Seagram. As the ship set sail to return to its home port of Milwaukee, everyone involved in the shipboard science experience was energized by what they'd been through together. I'm actually sad it's coming to an end. I learned a lot, I think, learning how to sail, learning all the uh, ins and outs of how to do everything, and the fact that I, I don't know the next time I'll be on a sailboat, so it's been pretty sweet. This is not something you do every day. This will be probably five days of my life that I'm on a tall ship on Lake Michigan. Everybody should know the story of their place. That history is something that could go extinct, just like a language can go extinct. So keeping those stories alive tells the history of a place, and I think that's important for people to know. I have a real excitement for education and uh, for young people, for teaching. And I always hope I share that wherever I go because I've been at it for 30 years and I do it all over again and it's an amazing, uh, an amazing job. For me, when we were doing introductions, um, one of the guys introduced himself and he said he wants to take back the enthusiasm of the Great Lakes and that's what I'm going to take back, not just about science and about Great Lakes, but just being enthusiastic about, about learning, whether it's Great Lakes, whether it's sailing, whether it's reading, writing, whatever it is, it's enthusiasm that really gets people motivated to do things. I must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds a-flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls a-crying. I must go down to the seas again to the vagrant gypsy life to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and a quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. The future of the Great Lakes hinges on the ability of teachers like these to foster the next generation of Great Lakes leaders. Young people who understand the importance of a healthy lake to the health of the region, the security of its people, and the hope and joy they bring to a person with every crashing wave, every sunset, and the abundance of life beneath the surface. Shipboard Science is a key program for the Center for Great Lakes Literacy. A key portion of this cruise was sponsored by the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. If you wish to learn more about Sea Grant's Shipboard Science program, please contact your state's Sea Grant office. <laughs>